to our ever active participants and supportive attendees and knowledge seekers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Greeting you all wherever in the world you may be watching us. Though we are from different parts of the world, this webinar is going to unite us all with the same goal, learning together. Welcome to the Institute of Global Professionals free international webinar. I am your host for today's learning session, Mr. Paul Martin de Vera. I'm a licensed high school social studies teacher from Tui Agro Industrial School, a technical vocational secondary school of the Department of Education Schools Division of Albay and a college instructor at Our Lady of Salvation College. Greeting you all, Mabuhay from the Philippines. And I hope that you're all doing well, safe and healthy despite the challenges brought about by the present pandemic. I am very proud to be associated with IGP as a global member. I feel honored and privileged to host this webinar. It is my delight to welcome you all to our free international webinar. We at the Institute of Global Professionals believe that power is gained by sharing knowledge and embracing the opportunity to learn, unlearn, and relearn. So thank you all for taking the time out of your busy day to learn with us, and please stay with us until the end. Please know that you can like and comment at any time in our webinar. Don't forget to share our live webinar and tag and mention your friends and colleagues in the comment box. So let us watch together and learn together. I hope that all of you will be associated with IGP as well as a global member. Let's continue being with us in all of our webinars. Check in on the IGP page, recommend IGP, and mention your friends and colleagues. Now, every day, we welcome new participants from all over the world to our webinar. So before we start, let me give you a brief background of the IGP. Now, the Institute of Global Professionals, or IGP, is an international institution and a leader in online skills development that serves students and community resource, provides holistic social work and education to create competent and proficient leaders and professionals. Our mission is to empower people and enhance effective training and consultation all over the world. We organize our web webinars, online and offline trainings, and courses with the guidance and support from only the best and well-trained coaches and speakers to create the best learning platform for all of you. We expect that all of our webinars will help you in your professional growth, and we wish that all of you will stay with us until the end of the session. Let me remind you again to please share our webinar and tag and mention your friends and colleagues in the comment box. Your support and your encouragement will help us to continuously provide you with quality learning sessions. Now for the e-certificate, please don't forget to enroll to this webinar. Just look for the topic social empowerment through education and entrepreneurship on eduigp.com and click enroll, or you may click the link found on our post. Now, during the live webinar, the code will be shared to all active participants who are going to stay with us until the end of the session. And an ISO verified e-certificate will be provided to all active participants. Again, we will share the code with you during our live webinar. So please stay with us until the end of the session. Now today we at IGP are very much delighted and honored to present to you our 174th webinar entitled Social Empowerment Through Education and Entrepreneurship. And joining us today are amazing and brilliant resource speakers from the United States of America, India, and Nepal. So please stay with us until the end of our international webinar. Now, 
For our first topic, we have invited a very remarkable lady, advocate Dr. Nupur Damija. Now she is very kind and professional enough to grace our webinar today, but for everyone's information, she is currently in the hospital battling COVID-19. So let us all send our love and prayers again to advocate Dr. Nupur Damija. And she is with us today. Dr. Hello, Damija. Hello to all respected dignitaries. Uh, I'm not well, uh, just you say. Uh, but I am uh, I want to say something for uh, my respected Carolyn Makaka, ma'am. Uh, really uh, inspire people and change their life. You are doing a really commendable job for society, ma'am. Uh, really, uh, you are a superb job. Uh, uh, I'm talking about amazing person. An amazing person is one who does remarkable things. When a person strives to enhance the lives of others, when she focuses on empowering people, uh, when she displays kindness and joy and curiosity, in order to better the world, she is an amazing person, and I'm really grateful uh, for uh, uh, respected Carolyn. Ma'am, you are doing really commend commendable job for society, and uh, I'm extremely. Please, sorry for today uh, and uh, my blessings, my support always be with you, ma'am. I am always be with you and thanks for uh, honoring me here. Thanks for inviting me here. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Thank you. Dear participants, uh, actually it's time for say something about Ma'am Nupur. Like uh, she is in, still she is in, in hospital due to COVID. So this is our time to uh, pray for her early recovery. So dear participants, it's a cordial request to you all. Please uh, pray for Ma'am Nupur and if she will be okay, then we will so we'll invite her again and again. But right now, we need some I'm prayer for ma'am. Ma ma my blessings, my support always be with you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Now it's Thank time. You, Your rest. Ma'am, take take rest. No problem. That you are true professionals. That's the uh, you already proved it. You are true professionals. So, ma'am, uh, no, you don't need to think. God will take care of you. In between time, ma'am, take rest, and we are always here to pray for you. Thank you so much for joining with us. And uh, actually, uh, without prayer, now I can't say anymore or I can't say anything. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am Nupur. We are all praying for your fast recovery. And again, a very remarkable lady indeed. Right? Um, our dear participants. So again, let's... I'll send our love and prayers to Advocate Dr. Nupur Damija. Now, um, our next for um, today's webinar, she is the founder and CBO of Mothers Helping Mothers Incorporated, which is a nonprofit organization driven to support the success of teen mothers and expecting teen mothers. She is also a business and birthing coach, a best-selling author, and a contributing author, a lonely executive global member, an ambassador of Commonwealth Entrepreneur Club, a philanthropist, an international influencer, and an advocate for teen moms who experience homelessness or lack of support. Now, my dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, another remarkable lady is here with us today. Let us all give a warm welcome to Dr. Cartesia Cohen. Hi, Dr. Cohen. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good morning here. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I thank my sister Caroline for this opportunity to be able to grace the stage 
and um, teach on the social economics and teach on empowerment through education and entrepreneurship. As you mentioned, I am the founder and CEO of a program that helps homeless teen moms all over the country. We're also in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I've been doing that for 17 years um, and it's something that brings joy to me. I was a teen mom. And so just teaching them that they can win through education and staying on track and having support services is what birthed the um, program. So today's topic is dear to me because that is what I teach on when I'm helping women and young girls. It's about education, how much we can pour into them and how much we can give back by teaching them to make them more um, efficient in our countries. So uh, I think I need to share uh, for the presentation. I have a slideshow that I will use today. Um, again, thank you so much for allowing me um, to be a part of the orientation um, for those that are joining us near and far. Thank you so much, ma'am, for um, gracing our webinar today. And for, um, may I just say, um, for the information of everyone, um, Dr. Cohen is also, um, I think she's going to be admitted tomorrow for a procedure. Is that right, uh, Dr. Cohen? Yes, um, I have a procedure tomorrow, and then I've, I've uh, been ongoing treatments for the last few weeks uh, to get my iron levels back up. Of course, we're, we're definitely praying for our sister that she recovers from COVID. Um, speedy recovery is, is taking a toll on, on us all over the world, and so I definitely want to uh, send my prayers to her, but Yes, keep me lifted as I go through the procedures that I'm going through to make sure that I can keep my body as well as possible so that, so that I don't obtain COVID. I'm also the director, um, operational director of a medical center, so I need to make sure I'm staying on top of yeah. myself. Um, yeah, but yeah. yes, absolutely. So uh, dear participants, let's all make sure that we send our to uh, Dr. Kertisha Cohen. And like, ma'am, you may go ahead with your presentation. Okay. So today we're talking about social empowerment through education and entrepreneurship. Um, I have been an entrepreneur for since I was 23 years old. I started um, with opening a child care center for uh, young girls and their babies um, that then moved into uh, a 175,000 square foot facility where we decided to not only give them a place to live, but we wanted to make sure that they had education and empowerment through entrepreneurship so that they did not um, repeat pregnancies or did not have to use the systems or government systems to stay afloat or to take care of themselves and their babies. So this is a dear subject to me. Um, I'm gonna start off with what is social empowerment. So we all know that we hear empowerment all the time. We hear uh, social uh, all the time, but what does that mean to have them both together? What it means is we're taking and developing throughout the countries um, empowerment, you know, by giving uh, certain economic information to those that can sustain themselves throughout the country. Um, we work with social empowerment at our empowerment center. I actually have, um, along with six other women, we have a Madonna Empowerment Center here in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And what we do there is we teach other women how to sustain themselves through entrepreneurship. So either birthing or rebirthing a business that will help make sure that they have wealth and education for their children's children. Whenever we're teaching about social empowerment, we want them to understand that it is definitely about what they can leave for their children and their children's children. And so that's why it's so important that we understand what using social empowerment through education and um, entrepreneurship is. Um, entrepreneurship, empowerment through education. As they said before, I am a partner advisor, a visionary, a speaker, an author, and through my leadership, I've helped women trans transform um, and bridging the gaps of challenges that they have in education and entrepreneurship. I do coaching workshops. I do global workshops. Um, our, our girls that are in Cape Town, South Africa, we meet through Skype or on the WhatsApp app, and we teach them how to improve um, their social economics through making sure that we can help them find jobs. 
um, one of the ladies over there have created a, a cleaning company and she uses that to teach them and educate them on how to uh, clean homes and how to take care of their homes and also get paid while doing it. So the more education that we give and the more knowledge that we pour into a young girl or into a woman, that brings forth what they can do um, to empower the world around them. And so we teach on that mostly uh, to women and, and young girls. Uh, I know there's platforms for, for men. And the reason why, when you see the next slide, the next few slides, you will understand why I actually push um, to help young girls and women um, because of the, the actual statistics behind if we don't have someone to help empower us or someone to help make sure that we have the education necessary to move forward. How can we be entrepreneurs and how can we uh, make make a name known for women all over the country? So by doing that, if we teach them and we break that bridge between education and adulthood, we can have a global impact. And that's the goal behind this is having a global impact that will allow us to do what it is that we would love to do. And that is by involving the community members, involving your schools, involving classrooms, doing what we're doing today and actually working um, to educate people all over the world. So letting them get to understand what that educational gap is. So I love talking to schools. I love going into the classrooms. As they said in my bio, um, I have been a child care owner for over 16 years. And so I love impacting young children because if we get them now, then they'll be ready for the future. And so also doing that by going into businesses and teaching them how to have free webinars and free services so that they can help um, their staff and the people around them be able to do things in their community. Um, global impact is very dear to my heart because whatever we do globally will help the entire world. And that's why it is very important that we bridge the gap on education in adulthood. On this slide, this is where it's important to understand why I love to give back to, to women and young girls. The majority of the world is poor for women. And this is a research that has been um, shown over and over again. And the key reason for that is the obtaining the lack of education in economics that the empowerment gives to men. Globally, over 33 million fewer girls than boys are enrolled in a primary education. So the fact that we push to make our uh, young boys get the education, and we know sometimes that is because you know, as a uh, young back in the day, they said that the women stayed home and took care of the house and took care of the children. And so because that is still somewhat of what the mindset is, that is why I believe these numbers still stay the same. Um, and the goal is to do as much education and give back as much as possible so that they can be able to change the gap of this 61% um, population between 15 and 24 of girls. This is why I focus my attention on young girls and women. Entrepreneurship and education can reduce poverty through so many different ways. But the main two is if we can empower them and we can give them the education and the tools that they need to move forward and to be successful and to understand what it is to break the generational cycle of poverty through education and entrepreneurship. And that's what I teach you on. Education and entrepreneurship, again, empowering women through education and entrepreneurship reduces poverty by decreasing their uh, ability to get employment. The goal is if we can help them get the education they need, then they can get the jobs that they deserve. But because of my um, calling and my background in entrepreneurship, my goal is to teach them how to create um, revenue through their own business, whether that's doing something from working at home, knitting or sewing or starting a cleaning company or um, starting a garden where they just give produce to people in their area. It's so many different things that we can do when it comes to teaching uh, women and children on entrepreneurship and education. Yes, it's, it's a global thing for us to teach all mankind 
but my focus has always been on women and girls. And we have proven, especially working with homeless teen moms and getting them back on track and helping them learn um, how to stabilize themselves. We have not seen repeated pregnancies in our organization. And we have seen those girls get on track and be stable enough not to have to go back into poverty or to be homeless ever again. The, the economic uh, system that we use teaches them how to empower themselves through entrepreneurship. Yes, we have some that are not called to entrepreneurship or don't really want to be a boss, um, don't have a desire to be a CEO. And that's where the education component comes in. Well, we can give you training to be a nurse. We can give you training, especially at our new location here in Georgia. We can train them on um, several things, phlebotomy, how to do medical billing and coding, things that can educate them enough to work from home, to educate them enough not to still have to do long hours. So our wraparound services that we offer at our community center is to teach you either entrepreneurship or how to be the best you can be in your career to move up in the ladder, to continue to get the income that's necessary to keep you stable. And I talk about homelessness a lot because it is something that's dear to me, especially when it comes to young girls and babies. And so today's topic was just um, very dear to me, you know, because we have to be able to teach education and entrepreneurship for um, our generations to come. And so and that's what we we instill and that's what we empower our girls to do. Um, I love empowering women. That is just something I've been doing for years as a coach, as an author, um, as a motivational speaker. Um, I pour into women on a daily basis. I feel if we can have a platform and we can have a way of empowering women, then those women then empower their children. And yes, you know, those that have husbands that we understand that the head of the house, we understand God, family, and then our mission. And my mission is to really break the cycle of poverty and, and reducing the, the numbers um, and bringing up what it is that women can do because it is necessary for us to stay in position so that we can have the income necessary to raise our children and bring them out of poverty. So we can have the necessary income to open up a facility or to push our missions forward. And so if anyone is on here that do education or that does empower others, take a moment to look at how you can create a free webinar or create a workshop or something right in your community, even if you have to do it um, verbally or, or on um, Skype like we're doing today because of COVID to keep yourself safe. But just imagine how many people you can impact with the education that you have, whether you are a teacher, whether you work as a doctor, just creating free webinars or creating um, some podcasts where you can tell and give information about what it is that you do. Any education is empowerment to others. And so whatever I have learned in the years of being an entrepreneur, I have used that to empower and to educate and to push others forward in life. Um, and I really believe that that improves the overall economic status and increase for those that are trying to secure and have food, those are that are trying to have housing, those that are trying to send their kids to colleges, those that are trying to just be able to live comfortably on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, empowerment education is very, very important. It's such a major gap um, that we all have to work together collectively to, to make sure that um, we are being, doing our part to give in those areas, especially when COVID hit and children had to be at home and mothers had to go from being at work and being back at home. What an amazing platform this has been for those that need to still be educated in certain areas during the pandemic. Um, so I take my hat off to those that have created this um, institution so that people can learn on a day-to-day -day basis what they can do to lift and empower their communities around the world. Um, 
And then again, I love what I do. I love this quote to the empowerment woman is powerful beyond measures and beautiful beyond description. And so I use that when I speak because the more we hold hands collectively and work together, the more we can break the cycle of poverty, the more we can give education, the more we can have um, entrepreneurship around the world, the more we can have for our future generations to come. What would it look like if you can close your eyes and see the benefits of a child and then see the benefits of that child's child in their life? If we can all work together to make sure that we're giving true loving education and then equipping them to start businesses or to do something in entrepreneurship. That is something I live by. That is something I instill in my children who are now adult children and something I use as a tool to instill in our communities around the world. Whenever I get a chance to impact or talk, those are two of the major things we speak about. Um, and that's why I was honored to be able to be on this platform today and to understand that anything that I can give off or anything that I can talk about in this area will help someone else. Um, and so if you need any information from me, um, one of the slides after this will have how you can follow me using just my name. Um, and I would love to speak with you or talk to you about how you can shift and start doing something in your community behind education and entrepreneurship to help others with the information and the uh, knowledge that you carry inside of you. So I thank you guys uh, for allowing me to be a part of this uh, amazing, amazing platform today. Prayers to those that was supposed to speak with me today that are ill. Um, and I pray that they'll get a chance to come back and give you their, in, their take on entrepreneurship and their take on education because we all need it and we all need to learn what it is to do to give back in those areas. And I thank you guys so much. Um, I know I'll still be uh, here um, just in case you guys have any questions. Um, do you have any 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 questions for me, sir, uh, at this time? I think we're going to process first um, your presentation. Okay. And then we're gonna go to um, have we're uh, we're gonna have a quiz after words and then a Q and A. Okay. Okay. So again, uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. Kurtisha Cohen, for gracing our webinar uh, today with uh, your time and, of course, for Absolutely. imparting your knowledge <laughs> and expertise uh, with us. So thank my dear you. participants, again, let us not forget to send our love and prayers Absolutely. to Absolutely. Dr. Cohen. Thank so, you. Um, may your procedure tomorrow go well. Thank and you. And we have the strength to quickly recover because we would love to have you and Dr. Damija again soon to uh, one of our webinars. Absolutely, absolutely. I'd love to be back. <laughs> All right, thank you again, uh, Dr. Cohen. Mm -hmm. I'll see, uh, we are going to see you later. All right, so uh, dear participants, remember the challenge uh, that Dr. Cohen has uh, left us. So according to her, we should think of a topic or we should come up with our own webinars as well or podcasts so that in that way uh, we'll be able to empower uh, more people we are going to uh, empower uh, more children and women uh, according to dr cohen so again let us all send to our remarkable speaker for today dr kurtisha cohen All right, so uh, at this point, I hope that you are still tuned in with us at our webinar. And it is already time for the quiz.
sir paul unmute yourself sir paul unmute yourself all right so looks like we have sir john michael h domains with us slido.com so if you want to participate on our quiz competition for today's webinar just go to slido.com and use the code igp quiz or you may just click on the link in uh, the comment box. So we have Ma'am Maria Veneranda Campos with us on Slido. We have more and more participants joining us for today's quiz competition. So it's uh, time to assess our learnings, put our game faces on, show our competitive sides, Ma'am Erica Javier, Ma'am Cherry Kibit is also with us on Slido. Again, just go to www.slido.com. Use the code IGP quiz to join today's quiz competition. It looks like we have uh, more participants are joining us on Slido. We have uh, Ma'am April Santiano. Leah Marie. Ma'am Leah Marie is with us on Slido. Again, that's slido.com and use the code IGP quiz. That's IGP Q U I Z to join today's quiz competition. Ma'am Jonah Marie is with us. Sir Rolando, Ma'am Annalyn Matasa is with us on Slido. So who is uh, going to be our first placer for today's quiz competition? Who is it going to be? Is it Ma'am Joy Likatan? Is it going to be Ma'am Phoebe Lou Santos? So again, that's slido.com. Code is IGP quiz to join today's quiz competition. Serenio is with us. Serenio Abrera. And I'm seeing familiar names. They're actually my co-teachers. So shout out to all my co-teachers at Tui Agro Industrial School. Sir Edward Ellis Jr. is with us. So are you guys ready for our quiz competition? All right, let's go to the first question. Define entrepreneurship. So is it a marketing display, planning, placement? You have eight seconds to answer. Okay, let's see. So majority answered marketing display, and that is incorrect. So the correct answer is planning, and only 27% got it correctly let's do let's try to do better on the next uh, question all right let's see let's see the next question so what does entrepreneurship mean you have 16 seconds to choose. Is it the first one or the second one? Does it involve creativity? Or is it uh, the one that involves the size and education level of the workforce? So majority answer the first one. It involves creativity and risk needed to develop new goods and services. And that is the correct answer. So congratulations. 
Next question, education communication information specialists do what? Do they communicate over phone? Or do they communicate skills to share information about agriculture? You have about seven seconds. Let's see what the correct answer is. Majority answered the second option. Is it the correct one? Yes, it is. So 56% got the correct answer for this question. Congratulations to all of you. Land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship are factors of production. Is it true or is it false? Is it true or is it false? Majority answered true, 96%, and that is the correct answer. So they are indeed factors of production. And currently in first place is still. Entrepreneurship primarily involves which phase of business? Is it the startup process or building and maintaining a sufficient customer base? You have eight seconds to answer. Let's see. So majority answered. Building and maintaining a sufficient customer base, and that is incorrect. So the minority answered the question correctly the startup process let's see who's leading still sir Elias is at is on the first place so we have how will entrepreneurship most likely help economic growth is it by protecting the environment or by creating goods and services so what is it is it protecting the environment or creating goods and services. Let's see, majority answered, creating goods and services. And that is the correct answer. 91% got the question correctly. Let's see if Sir Elias, oh, we have Maria currently on the first place. More than 35% of the richest people in the world do not have a college education. Is it true or is it false? Is it more than 35%? Let us see. Majority answered true. And that is incorrect. So false is the correct answer. Only 16% got the question correctly. Let's do better on the next question. So let's see who's leading. Still, Mama Maria Veneranda is leading. Now, does land mean involves the size and education level of the workforce? Is it true or false? Does land mean involves the size and education level of the workforce? Let's see. Majority answered. False. It's a close fight between true and false. So 52% got it correctly. The answer is false. Let's see if Mama Maria is still leading the competition. The quantity and quality of resources are a person has like food, clothing, education, and health care. So are these human resources or is it standard of living? So food, clothing, education, and healthcare are, these are standard of living. So 68% got the question correctly. And let's see who's leading. So Mama Maria Veneranda is still in first place. The skills, talents, and education of people used in the production of goods and services. So is it entrepreneur or human resources? Let's 
see. Eight seconds to answer. Majority answered. Entrepreneur. And that is incorrect. Correct answer is human resources. And that is our 10th question. Let's see who's leading our quiz competition. So congratulations, Ma'am Maria Veneranda Z Campos for winning today's quiz competition. But don't worry, our top 10 for today's quiz competition, they are all going to receive certificates for uh, completing and for competing on today's quiz competition. So we have, let's see, after, let's see. Dr. Ma Maria, we have Rosler P. Cabasag, Rinyel P. Malaka, and let's see, Ma'am Christelle Joyce Cabacang, Sir Joel A. Bernasor, Ma'am Lizelle Gabaldon, Ma'am Aileen S. Enon, Ma'am Cleopatra A. Yasai, Ma'am Michelle T. De La Cruz, and Ma'am Annabelle Balderian. So they're they are our top 10 for today's quiz competition. Congratulations. All of you are going to receive certificates for um, being our top 10 for today's quiz competition. All right. Congratulations again to our top 10 and to everyone who participated in our quiz competition. So again, I, I hope that you are still tuned in with us at our, at our webinar. Once again, I would like to remind all of you, our dear attendees and participants of this international sharing this live, please tag, comment, and mention your friends and colleagues. We're not yet done with uh, our learning session. And again, a reminder to receive your ISO verified certificate. You have to enroll to this webinar. Just look for the topic social empowerment through education and entrepreneurship on eduigt.com click enroll or just click on the link that uh, you can find on our post so stay tuned again All right, so at this point, I'd like to ask you, our dear and active participants, to type in your questions on the comment box, and we will bring in again, of course, our amazing and brilliant speaker, Dr. Kartisha Cohen, to answer any uh, questions that you might have about uh, the topic that she discussed earlier. So we have our first question. What other roles our government plays for entrepreneurship aside from programs and funding? From oh, Sir that's Rachel. a good one. Um, the other roles that they play is giving, um, they also have platforms. Well, in the United States, we have like the SBA, um, which is the Small Business Minority uh, in the Small Business Administration, and they help with minority uh, workshops and education. Um, so our government, um, you know, I can't speak for every country, but they play a huge role in giving us education. They also play a huge role in you could go to several websites and get information on webinars such as the one you guys are presenting today to give you more knowledge and education that you would need um, outside of just regular programs and funding. 
Um, they also uh, provide services to nonprofits and community agencies that are giving um, different items and different things to uh, help the community, such as, like I said, our nonprofit helps homeless teen moms. So the government plays a big role in making sure that nonprofits can stay stable. And it's not always through them giving us program or funding, but sometimes it's just giving the, the resources like items or, you know, allowing us to use public library parking lots to give back to the community. All right. Thank you, Dr. Cohen. And uh, I hope you were able to answer your question, Mr. Reynolds Seelot. All right. Again, just uh, please type in your questions, comment your questions in the comment box. All right, from Ma'am Manolita Ramos Oligo. Street children are vulnerable to exploitation and violence as they endanger their lives working on streets to earn money to support their families. Some are denied to go to school or have dropped out of school. So with no child left behind by education, why is this not being addressed? That is a really good question. Um, and I know it's, it's for right here, even in Georgia, we talk about, you know, our, our table discussions or the information that we discuss over the phone. Because I deal with teen moms, we definitely see human trafficking. We definitely see um, the risk of them being able to uh, get trapped into that. Um, working with Cape Town, South Africa, we see it a lot. Those young moms can't go to school. They don't have the education for it. And so I think that the more people that get information about the No Child Left Behind and speak about it is how we can make them address it even more. Um, it's even talked about on the, the child care level of early childhood, because remember in the United States of America, they you know, used to have where the kids were left behind if they still wasn't reading or writing at a certain level. And so that does bring forth a risk of a child not wanting to finish high school and dropping out because they should be two or three levels ahead. But because of the act of the no child left behind not still being completely enforced, it leaves them no, um, no other opportunity but to drop out. And so uh, my team and other teams around the country, the goal is to really address that we should be speaking more on the No Child Left Behind because I feel like it was passed, but you are definitely right. Um, we don't hear about it as, uh, as much. And so that's what I was talking about during the presentation, how you can play a part in learning more about the No Child Left Behind Act and then creating some kind of social uh, um platform behind it, whether it's a podcast or or creating your own um, online webinars, get forces behind you, start a group of, of women that will that wants to address this issue as well and work towards that. Because remember, especially since COVID hit, some of these things are the last things they want to talk about. And let's let's not forget last year, most children were in home doing their work and really fell behind because they were not used to online education. And so we have to fight. I know I was just helping my sister in Ohio fight that because why would my son have to redo another grade if it was the COVID pandemic in the year prior to that, he had good grades. And so we have to all be advocates for mothers and, and families that can't speak on their behalf. So becoming an advocate in this area will help make us be able to address these issues more. All right, very well said, uh, Dr. Cohen. So it all boils down to us working together. So it's really a collaborative effort and to make sure that no one is left behind. So another question from Ma'am Rosa Bella Malo: How to relate education and entrepreneurship in measuring success? Well, I can speak on our program when someone comes through the program we make sure that we are using all the tools necessary to make sure they understand the, the components of the education around entrepreneurship. And then we walk them through an entire process. And in the Mothers Up and Mothers program, we follow our, our uh, participants for five years. And so we measure the success based off how far they've gotten. You got to remember everyone learns in education differently. Some of us are audio learners, some of us are visual learners, and some of us are hands-on. So the measure of the success is not the same. Um, it's looking at the individual person. And I just talked about that on Clubhouse um, about a month ago on not using the measure of success for overall. 
people because we all learn differently. So you have to take that individual person and measure their success based off the education that they understand and move them forward into entrepreneurship because everyone is not called to entrepreneurship, but everyone can be educated. Exactly. That's not a no uh, all such fits all. Absolutely. So, yep. I hope you were able to answer your question, Mom Rosabella Malo. And any more questions? So please uh, type in your questions in the comment box. From Sir Neil Vincent Diana, how can teaching entrepreneurship and innovation be developed at elementary schools and high schools? Oh, I love this question. So for me personally, um, as a childcare owner um, for 17 and a half years, what we did was create an entrepreneurship program within our school age children. So anybody ages five to 12 um, during the summer months, we let them actually learn what it was. It's a program out there called Money Tree and it's for children and it's developing the entrepreneurship early. I really love this question because we definitely should be developing entrepreneurship in these in these children early. And especially if we can get to the high school kids. So what we did in the summer is, you know, we have young girls that love to do um their the beading necklaces we let them actually make them in class and then we displayed them where their families came in and bought from them and then we showed them how to save or how to develop it into a business plan so i was teaching mm -hmm. our young kids at the school um i talked on this with miss caroline on a different platform last year that it is very very important that we find a way to innovate this entrepreneurship skills into elementary and high school. Imagine how many after high school won't get in debt with college, you know, thinking that they want to do what their families told them to do when they can come out of high school with a business and go straight into um, the world of entrepreneurship. So I think it's developing a, a program and then pitching that to your local your local high schools. Maybe you do it as an after school program. Maybe you can say, you know, this is what I want to do um, for elementary kids. How can I do this as an after school program? So instead of those that can't afford daycare, you can have it as a free service or a small fee, a smaller, smaller fee than what childcare does. And then now you have the eye of however many little children joined your, uh, your entrepreneur program. So that is how we can get it developed into elementaries and high schools. Sometimes our teachers are already taken on enough. So you can educate yourself in that area and then create a development program or a summer camp or a boot camp on helping those kids in that in that arena. Yeah, what a very interesting way to um all right, we have another question <laughs> from uh, Mr. Edwin Go. Um, of course, see you. Uh, the, the question is addressed to you, Dr. Cohen. In this time of pandemic, do you think creating income generating project is still necessary, and how it can be? Uh, thank you. Um, I think that is definitely during the pandemic we all understood that creating some type of generational income and cre creating some type of income within your home because most of us was locked down. You know, during the pandemic, I moved from Ohio to Georgia during the pandemic. You know, I know it sounds crazy, but trying to come up with ways to coach from home, trying to come up with workshop programs that, that can uh, generate income for your family um, is definitely necessary because we don't know with this pandemic how much farther it's going to go and when is it going to be completely over? And so trying to find a way to uh, create income for your family is definitely necessary and very important. I actually just talked to my team yesterday and we were trying to think of other ways to bring in income outside of the stuff that we do with COVID testing and that kind of stuff over at Grace Medical. Um, and so creating things we can do from home, you know, creating more medical biller and coders. So getting into industries that allow you to work from home or creating a business that is comfortable in your home that can generate income for you is definitely necessary because we don't know the direction that this pandemic is going. And we definitely don't want to see ourselves in a position where we still can't care for our families. I hope that answered the question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cohen. So it's still necessary, it's still relevant to create income generating projects. And as it's early as elementary, we can 
already teach students uh, entrepreneurial skills. Yeah. Right? Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Um, any more questions from Sir Rosaler Kabasag? What advice would you give to someone who is trying to become an entrepreneur, especially in this time of pandemic? Um, it kind of relates back to the last question. It would be to um, come up with something you can do from home um, or something you can do that can still keep you safe. Uh, most entrepreneurs took a hit in the pandemic, including myself. When I closed my child care center after 17 years, I couldn't reopen it. You know, the, it was inside of an elementary school. So they needed the classrooms, of course, so we can spread out the children more to be safe. So that's when you go back to the drawing board as an entrepreneur and try to come up with programming or come up with something that you can do to compensate that, that, um, that income. And so becoming an entrepreneur in the pandemic, it actually increased. We saw more people become entrepreneurs during the pandemic than before uh, 2019. And why did they do that? Because one, you were in the comfort of your home. You had more time to think and develop. We were stuck at home. So you had more time to research and get onto webinars such as this one and figure out how you can uh, have a niche um, in the pandemic that will cause you to become an entrepreneur. And so what I would say is still push, still pursue, um, still have perseverance and have patience. As an entrepreneur, we have to have patience because there's an up and down climb when doing um, entrepreneurship. You can have a good month and then the next month cannot be a good month. So you want to make sure that you are pacing yourself as a new entrepreneur. Make sure you're getting on as many of these free webinars or you know, small pay webinars as you can to stay educated. Again, this is about education and entrepreneurship. So stay on top of the industry and the niche that you're in through education and through continuing to learn, getting books that you can read. Um, but it's definitely necessary, especially in a pandemic because most jobs shut down during the pandemic. And then we were all trying to figure out what to do. And so push, Keep patience and have perseverance, and you will be great as an entrepreneur in the pandemic. Wow, very inspiring, Dr. Cohen. So I hope, yeah, we were able to answer your question. And another question from uh, Ms. Farila Rizahi, how to empower women entrepreneurs in a situation where they have very less opportunity? Um, that's a good question because that was me in 2007 when um, uh, 2006, I actually birthed Mother's Supper Mothers, but in 2009, it became a 501c3. In today's society, um, what what the niche is, is not really recognized. So teen moms are is not something that people are looking for. We talk about homelessness and we talk about, you know, um, youth homelessness, but we don't really talk about teen moms. So I am was really that situation. I was an entrepreneur trying to push um, an agenda in a certain arena. And so what I did was create um income, generated income through day, opening a daycare, through speaking and teaching others um, that gave me the opportunity to still do what I was called to do. So what I would say to you as an entrepreneur that wants to still have the, the ability to empower women, don't look at the less of the opportunity, look at what you can do to create the opportunity. So sometimes we wait on government and sometimes we wait on others to help us. But if God gave it to you and it's meant for you to do everything that you need during that that uh, situation will come forth. You know, we had very little um, donations and very little grants, but we've helped over 70,000 in the United States of America um, in, teen, in the Teen Mom Arena. And we've helped over 80,000 in Cape Town, South Africa with very little funding. Why? Because we created our own opportunities. We got team members who didn't care about being paid, but wanted to help a cause. We thought about, you know, doing fundraisers on our own or instead of asking for money, ask for items. So you have to create your own opportunities where there's less opportunities for you to grow. All right. So if we can't find opportunity, create one. Absolutely. All right. So I guess we have one more question from mom. Ma'am Mardelis Quahotor, is it true that the only way to make people more entrepreneurial is by applying a learning by doing approach. 
Um, I definitely believe it's a hands-on, um, a hands-on thing, especially for me. I went to school to uh, get my associate degree as a medical assistant, and um, I only did that job uh, for about three years at Children's Hospital. So everything I learned outside of that was the hands-on approach. So, l- like I said to the question, of, um, the the guy that asked the question about learning, getting in front of webinars like this, understanding your niche. Um, will make you uh, uh, to get more entrepreneurs, to get more people involved with becoming entrepreneurs is definitely education approach is definitely a learning approach because you you want to get in. Um, I read a quote yesterday. Uh, sometimes you start the business without a business plan. And that's true for a lot of people because you have a heart for something or you wake up with this great idea. But once you get in, you get stuck. So what do you do to fix it? You start to research, you start to find learning opportunities. So it's always going to be a learning approach in entrepreneurship, but there definitely are more entrepreneurs, like I said, birthed in the pandemic because they sat at home and was able to have that learning approach and get webinars such as this. So I hope that answered your question, but it's definitely a learning approach that will take you into the journey of entrepreneurship. Right, exactly. And another question from mm-hmm. Mr. Francis Sikig the third. What strategies can you suggest for the teachers who want to teach entrepreneurship? The strategies. Um, so for me, again, I told you in the child care center, we worked with um, five to 12 year olds. So the strategies was making it fun, um, coming up with something that they like to do. So to make them an entrepreneur, you you separate the class and you find out Who all wants to do this and who all wants to do this and who all wants to do this? And then you create an entrepreneurship approach around that. Some people wanted to do lemonade stands. Okay, what does it take to start one? Can you partner up? So teaching them how to partner up. So you can bring entrepreneurship into the classroom sometimes without them even knowing, creating a grocery store. We created a grocery store in a preschool class one day and we had the one of the, the two or three of the students were the owners of the grocery store, but they had to learn how to stock the grocery store. One had to learn how to go buy more products. So you can teach entrepreneurship even without it being a lesson plan just through 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 play. And so I hope that answered your question because I'm not for sure if he was a high school teacher or a um, edu- uh, uh, elementary teacher. But either way it go, even in, in even in high school, you could come up with a project on a Thursday and have them report back on a Monday of what they did for that project over the weekend that teaches them entrepreneurship. All right. So, uh, again, that concludes our question and answer. And again, uh, thank you, Dr. Kartija Cohen, for gracing our webinar today uh, with your time. Thank and of you. course, for impart, uh, imparting your knowledge and expertise uh, with us. So um, again, uh, dear participants, let us not forget to send our love and prayers to Dr. Cohen and also uh, Dr. Damija. Yes. Um, right. So um, ma'am, uh, may your procedure tomorrow go well and successful and please have the strength to quickly recover because we would love to to have you again. On Absolutely. Our webinars. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you guys you, for having me. Um, and, I, and I wish you well. Thank you so much. Thank all the participants for being on today. And for being active. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Dr. Cohen. Uh Uh-huh. You have a good one. You do the same. Thank you. All right. So there we, uh, you have it. So that was, again, one of uh, our remarkable speakers for tonight or for today's webinar. Again, Dr. Kartisha Cohen. And we have a few announcements. Let's see. So uh, you can get double bonus with a regular webinar. So how's that possible? Now, along with a regular webinars, you also have, uh, or we have also added webinars every weekend, and that's every Sunday morning. And that is for the month of September. So the September morning sessions are going to be on the following date. So we have September 12th, September 19th, and September 26th, and it's going to be um, from 9.30 a.m. 
onwards. So again, you can get double bonus with uh, the regular webinars by attending our September morning sessions. And if there's double, we have triple bonus. So from October, we will start webinar series program. So you will get individual certificate for each webinar. And after submitting all certificates, you will receive a, a webinar series certificate. So five part or 10 part series, we are in the process of loading um, the, the series. Now, the topics are gonna to be highly focused on teaching strategies, research, assessment, uh, pedagogy, tools and techniques, professional development, and communication skills. So take note of the dates. So it's uh, we are going to talk about authentic assessment and teaching and learning. So October 1st, that's part one. Second part is October 4th. Part three is October 7th. Part fourth is going to be on October 10th. And October 26th is going to be the part five. So take note of those dates. All right, so step-by-step -step process. So the certificate code must must be from July 12th of 2021, which they are available on uh, video sessions towards the certification part of the webinar. Now, without the certificate code, no one is eligible for the certificates. So you have to take note of the code every time. Now, the video will be available always on our Facebook page, website, and YouTube channel. Now, who wants to learn? Anyone can join us on live sessions or later on our recorded sessions. So if you missed today's webinar, you can always catch um, the webinar and still get your e-certificate. Now, we don't have any restrictions for learning. Our only focus is to learn anything you want and learning is a must. Now, the beautiful thing about learning is nobody can take it away from you. That's by B.B. King. So are you ready for our code? All right, so we have our diploma certificate announcement. After checking your activity and your submitted certificates, now, if you qualified, we will upload your diploma certificate on our website. And you have to download it from our website. That is www.eduigp.com. And that's going to be after the 10th of September. So you have to wait until the 10th of September to download your certificate. And we have an another announcement, a happy one. Now, we don't have any traffic issues on our website. So thank you for all your patience and your understanding. And I guess we have more announcements. And we are very sorry due to some of the data missing, especially membership data. Um, the it is temporary temporarily um, unavailable for for just a few days. So we will back uh, we will be back again for IGP global membership with full support starting the 16th of September. So don't worry all of your membership will be processed starting the 16th of September. I guess we have more announcements. All right, so support from community this month of September is too much important for IGP. Uh, we will be visible all promises within this month, quizzes, awards, new website, mobile app, and many more. So there's a lot to look forward to this month of September. So we really need your uh, mental support, support from you, our dear participants. And uh, okay, let's show them. So today's program name, the title of our webinar is Social Empowerment Through Education and Entrepreneurship. This is our 174th webinar. So for you to receive your e-certificate, just click on the certification link. It is now available in the 
comment box and pin and comment. Now, the certification link will be available always in this program post. So uh, on our Facebook page, Facebook group, and YouTube channel in the description box. So like I said, if you missed an episode, just go back and you can still claim your e-certificate. So here's the process. You can claim your certificate in two ways. Like I mentioned, there's a direct link from the comment box, a pinned comment, post description. Now, if you're not able to click the link, just go to www.eduigp.com for all information. And uh, you can find today's program and the process again will be the same. So again, browse our website, www.eduigp.com, or click on the link, and then you will be redirected uh, to this page uh, of our website. So you can see the title of our webinar, Social Empowerment Through Education and Entrepreneurship. And then, very important, click Enroll Now. Do not forget to enroll the course or the webinar. Now, if you're new, you will be asked to create your account. Now, if you have an account, just log in. And then after that, you'll find the seminar title and just click on Enroll. So once enrolled, there. So you have to enter the code. And the code for today's webinar is, take this down, is IGP01. Four, seven. Again, the code for today's webinar is IGP0147. Again, without the code, you will not be eligible for the e-certificate. So again, the code for social empowerment through education and entrepreneurship is IGP0147. So you can see the box where you can type in the code for today's webinar. Once done, just click on there. So claim your certificate, the blue one. So again, the code is specific for today's webinar. So just look for the title and then enter the code IGP0147 for you to get your e-certificate. And then after that, your certificate is ready. And the certificate that you're going to get is uh, an ISO certified certificate. Now, our free international webinar certificate is auto-downloadable in PDF file. Now, you don't need to download it manually. So check your device file manager because sometimes it looks uncompleted, which is uh, for your mobile screen size. But uh, it should be in PDF file and should be okay. So we'll look um, on the device file manager for your e-certificate. Now, if nothing is found in your file manager, just uh, please check your browser setting or update your browser or try with another browser or try it from a laptop or desktop. Rest assured that you're going to get your e-certificate. All right, so again, you can join all of our live programs from our Facebook page, Facebook group, our YouTube channel, and from our website. And don't worry if you missed any of our webinars or programs due to, let's say, internet issues, unavoidable issues. Still, you can attend previous webinars with verified certificate, but again, you have to have your webinar code for each webinar for you to get your e-certificate. All right, so if any problem is encountered in claiming your certificate or any other issues, please don't hesitate to contact us. So again, with the 
code, you can claim your certificates anytime. And our core team members are always ready in comment section to support you to find solutions. Now here's our team customer, uh, customer service representative. We have uh, Ma'am Charisse Abejo Cabiros and uh, Ma'am Janet Cablao for uh, our Facebook page. So um, they're ready to help. And we also have um, on our Facebook group, we have Ma'am Sherilyn Yamaguchi, Sir Jonas Malingan, and uh, Sir Alonso Warren Cariaga. And for our YouTube channel, we have Mr. Kelvin Linato, Joel Denoog, and Sir Jeffrey Sayan. All right, so we have, we are going to have our first webinar series program. So it's starting October 1st, and then followed by October 4th, 7th, 10th, and 26th. So you can book your seat now at www.eduigp.com. And that's evening sessions. So take note of the dates. All right, so our next webinar is going to be uh, tomorrow, September 7th. And we are going to talk about the ICT uses in everywhere. So we have uh, three brilliant speakers again joining us for tomorrow's webinar. So please do not miss it. As early as now, you can already enroll uh, to this webinar so that by tomorrow, you're going to be ready and watch and learn and then wait for the webinar code so you can get your e-certificate. So again, same time. And we also have upcoming uh, webinar on September 8th. We are going to talk about productivity and time management. And we also have three brilliant speakers uh, joining us for our September 8th session. So again, and look for uh, look for the title and enroll to get your e-certificate. Upcoming webinar on September 9th, we are going to talk about the impact of quality education in a new normal. And we have two speakers from the Philippines joining us. So again, enroll the impact of quality education in a new normal. And on September 10th, we are going to talk about the importance of information and technology. Three speakers will be joining us. So again, go to our website, look for the title and click enroll. So you won't uh, miss this uh, great opportunity to learn. And September 11th, we are going to have Supporting Learning Through Interactive Learning Tools. So we have three speakers. Again, look for the title of this webinar, Enroll, so you won't miss it on September 11th, 2021. And this is an evening session. Okay, another morning session. So that's going to be on September 17th, Reading Interventions During the Pandemic. So we have three speakers. Again, this is going to be a um, morning session, international webinar. So again, enroll so you won't miss this webinar. And then we also have Developing a Miracle Mindset. So we have four Source speakers joining us on September 17th. So again, it's an evening session. Go to our website and roll the topic or the webinar. And another one is research methodology and literature review. So two speakers are going to be uh, joining us for that webinar. So again, Go to eduigp.com and enroll this webinar. And of course, the importance of health and wellness, September 14th evening session. So we have three speakers joining us. So again, if you're interested, enroll 
the webinar, attend the webinar, participate, and take note of the webinar code. That is correct. Let's see. All right, so we have 21st skills in education and integration of technology. And uh, again, this is an evening session with uh, three speakers joining us on September 15th, 2021. Around the same time, just go to www.edu.com to enroll this webinar in advance. Okay, and the power of women leaders on September 16th evening session. So we have three brilliant and amazing uh, women joining us on September 16th. So look for the title of this webinar and roll. So you won't miss this amazing opportunity to learn the power of women leaders. Okay. Any more announcements? Of course, financial education. On September 17th evening session, we have three speakers joining us. So they're going to talk about financial literacy, financial planning, investment strategies. Wow, very timely and relevant. So just go to our website, look for financial education, enroll and attend the webinar so you can get your e-certificate. And the following day, September 18th, we are going to talk about the power of positive thinking. So joining us are three speakers. And this is gonna be an evening session. So you can look for this webinar title the power of positive thinking and role so you won't miss this chance to uh, interact and ask questions september 18th and september 19th we have interactive learning strategies in education so this is going to be a morning session joining us are three speakers so we're gonna talk about um, the sample of interactive lessons, trends, and overview and importance of uh, interactive learning. So uh, this is gonna be our 188th uh, morning session. So enroll this webinar so you won't miss it. And another um, evening session, September 19th, we are going to uh, talk about psychosocial issues of students. Very important. So joining us are three speakers again on September 19th. So psychosocial issues of students. And on September 20th, we're going to have skills, not degrees, the future of employment globally. So this is an evening session. Joining us are two speakers from Nigeria and India. So just look for the webinar topic and enroll uh, this webinar. Again, evening session, September 20th. All right. Any more announcements? So again, we are showing you the code for today's webinar. Again, that's IGP0147. That's the webinar code for social empowerment through education and entrepreneurship. So take note of the webinar code IGP0147 to receive your e-certificates for today's webinar. All right, so I hope that you all have learned something from today's discussion. So again, thank you, uh, our dear participants, for always joining us 
and uh, for always learning with us. So again, um, I hope that you all have your codes um, at this moment. So to all of you, um, our dear participants, who's always active, um, may I just say, um, our speaker was very impressed because you were active, you were asking questions um, during the question and answer. So I'd like to thank you um, for attending today's uh, session. And I know that you all have learned something new and useful to your profession. And I hope that you will apply all these learnings in your life. And always remember knowledge without application is simply knowledge. So applying the knowledge to one's life and wisdom uh, is wisdom. And that is the ultimate virtue. So once again, thank you everyone for joining us today's webinar. It has been a pleasure and honor being your host for today. And I hope to see you all again in the near future. And I hope that after this pandemic, we'll be able to have an opportunity to be in a physical venue where we can learn together. In the meantime, let us all continue to learn virtually through the Institute of Global Professionals International Webinar Series. And I hope to see you all again in the upcoming webinars. So stay happy, stay safe and healthy. Again, this has been your Wendy Vera, and I will see you all again next time. Bye.